session of VPL. Uh, we have that the student will learn and gain a lot of experience from practitioner who is an expert in their field. And I'm so happy Mr. Alec want to join us because I know he has a lot of interesting experiences in broadcasting and advertising. <laughs> we worked together in uh, on Bapak's production uh, in 2018 and uh, it's been a long time, yeah, Mr. Alec? Yes, seems like, yeah, long, long ago, yeah. <laughs> long, long time ago. And today, uh, we can discuss about the digital social media and how the content that worked during the pandemic COVID-19 is an uh, interesting topic that we can discuss today. And before we start the class, I would like to say thank you to Ms. Uh, Octifani of PIC of uh, Virtual Public Lecture and also today uh, she is a moderator. And uh, all the lecture of digital marketing and communication and management digital content courses, Mrs. Eddy and uh, I see that uh, Miss Hana ya, yeah, right? uh, Mrs. Hana ada juga. Kemudian ada Mas Latif, Mr. Latif. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. And of course, uh, thank you so much uh, to organize this class today. And thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alex, the rest. Hopefully, you can enjoy the class. Thank you. Mungkin itu aja, Bu Oktif, yang bisa saya sampaikan. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, okay, um, everyone, please uh, make sure you have your video on so that uh, Mr. Alex can see how handsome and how pretty our students are. Uh, okay, please, everyone, make sure your video on. Okay, okay. Um, I think we can directly proceed to uh, Mr. Alex uh, to start the lecture. Oh, okay. Uh, can I? Can I start? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, guys. Good afternoon. My name, my name is Alexander. As you know, and I'm coming from Peru. My professional background is on filmmaking, cinematography. You know, which is mean that gives me the big spectrum to work. Uh, and you know, from movies, advertisements, documentaries, TV, and now for me, now my new background is social media. I'm not saying that this, I'm so expert in social media because, because actually I'm learning, actually I'm really learning how social, social media works, especially with nowadays uh, pandemia. But I focus more on Instagram, okay? Now, I don't have a TikTok account. I don't have, I do not have a Twitter account. So I don't know what is happening in those words, but so far in Instagram, in the last years, pre-pandemia and post-pandemia, I learned how people move around, you know? It's like a following the trend, you know? How to read the trend, that is the idea, right? Let's make it short, you know? Um, there are certain kind of factors inside the equation, you know, inside the formula, okay? In order to be successful in social media, you need certain kind of uh, elements, you know, or factors that all of them together, they work so well. If you remove one of two of them, it's still working so well. And you, if you add extra factors into the equation, also work okay. But we are going to have some cases uh, when this formula, it works, let's say it works, and this formula doesn't work as you expected. Um, let's start with one of the factors, you know, is important nowadays that you need to add media into your account you know let's say if you want to sell food you know you need pictures of that food you need videos of that you know food you need audio you know if you want to to show you know what you are selling it's not so easy just to say i have the best food in the world and this is the price you know that's it come and get it and we have coach drive blah 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 you know it's not enough you need to show what you are selling you need to sell you know that uh, that is one of the first and most important elements of, or factors that you need in social media, especially Instagram, which I'm focusing right now. The second one is, uh, let's call it social commerce, you know? So you are selling a good, you are selling a product, you are selling a service, so something you are selling. So you have to somehow send the message from you, your prospective uh, buyer, you know, to, the, to your product prospective client, so which is actually something that we are going through because they are a kind of tools 
they are kind of, um, uh, let's say, yeah, I would call tools that people use and they take advantage of these tools in order to make it happen, you know, in order to sell something. The next step is technology. Uh, nowadays, everybody has a cell phone. I'm using my cell phone right now. My laptop's not working, so I have to use my cell phone. And if you don't have a cell phone in your hands, let's say you are not connected with the world, you know, people will assume that you live in the Stone Age and you don't have a um, device how to connect with others, you know. It's like mandatory right now, nowadays, to have a cell phone. Uh, but I'm not going to focus on self itself uh, only. Uh, I'm going to focus on the applications or tools that a cell phone can give you in order to achieve your goal, which is to get more followers or more clients, you know, stuff like that. Then I move towards to personalized marketing. Uh, this is this one is tricky. Yeah. Um, for example, if I say, "Hey guys, uh, do you know the brand Nike?" Everybody will say, "Yes, we know Nike." And do you identify Nike with a symbol? Everybody knows, you know, the little check thing, you know, uh, that belongs to Nike. So it's easy to spot Nike. And if I say, "Guys, which one is the color of Coca-Cola?" Everybody will say red and white. So everybody will spot those brands. You know, it's going to be easy. But what happened? when someone wants to go to the market and wants to sell their image or their product or any service, and they don't know how to introduce them themselves. You know, uh, they say, I might need a special kind of look and a special kind of attire, uh, colors that can define my product or myself. Let's call it style, you know, let's call it like that, uh, which is being a kind of personalized, personalized marketing. So you are selling yourself, you are selling your product, you are selling your service, and somehow it needs to have an identity which is actually is very important into the, um, how to read uh, content online, identity. And we are going to touch that point soon. And then we move to content for good. Content for good is one of my favorite ones because it's like we call it uh, selling the fish. You know, I, you have this, inst I will show you later uh, who I'm talking about. Uh, we have this girl, her name is Karen that she shows you how to make an amazing videos with her cell phone, you know, she used the pole, you know, and then the cell phone at the end and start to move the pole around and she got some amazing shots. And they are teaching you how to do something that looks complicated, but actually so simple by using some tools in your house. And you learn something new, you know, you got the new knowledge, you know, you say, oh my God, I will use next time for, I don't know, for my next wedding video, you know, I will use my cell phone and going around the bride and get some amazing shots. So you learn something, someone uh, taught you how to uh, not to sell the fish, how to get the fish, the, which is a quote that we usually use a lot in, the, in, in, in our arena, you know? Rather than teach me how to do it, you are, teaching, you are telling me uh, the idea itself, you know, the way how you achieve that idea or that goal, that is another story. So when you have a contact for good, you have also people that they are telling you, hey guys, today we are going to learn how to blah, 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 you know, how to this, how to that. And there are a lot of channels in YouTube and Instagram nowadays that they teach you in one minute how to do something simple. We call it uh, life hacks. And you will have a lot of people following these groups uh, on Instagram or YouTube in order to learn something new, you know, most of the time, uh, somebody else talking to me. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. so sorry. It's just, uh, okay. I think, um, yeah, uh, Mr. Alex, uh, please continue. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry, I thought someone was asking me uh, about something. Okay. Uh, again, uh, so nowadays you have these people teaching you things online, you know, which is actually me as a follower. I follow many of them, you know, how to do things in five minutes. You learn something. And then I move on. Um, I will use this factor. Sorry, I will use this factor as the most important ones, you know, in considering how to read content online and how you can achieve from zero to 1,000 followers in one, in, 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 let's say, in one month. I'm not the best example because I don't use this kind of factors, but I like to read a lot of this content because this is you know, the best way for me, you know, to, when I, pre, uh, when I write a hashtag on it, you know, I know, you know, which people I want to address to. And when I talk about people, I will focus in for now on Indonesian market, especially in Surabaya people, you know? Indonesian market, it's quite so different from other markets because uh, people I met here, 
they love the new trend, you know? They like new stuff, uh, new flavors, you know? Like for example, like a couple of months ago, there was a store that was selling um, ice cream with rainbow colors and shape. And they were using that ice cream on chicken. I said, oh my God, what is this? This is so weird. But you have like thousands of people following that place, that store in order you know, to get that crazy chicken, fried chicken with the ice cream rainbow around, you know? I'm not saying that you guys are weird. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you like to try new stuff, you know, which is actually good. So give me, it gives me the possibility, the chance to create something, a benefit, something, a service or a product that can create a trend. So in few words, the market, the nutrition marketing, uh, market is adapting itself to any trend that is coming nowadays. So you don't need to follow the trend. You have to create the trend, especially in this market. And for that, I'm saying, like, for example, there are a lot of coffee shops, you know, in every single corner in Surabaya, there is like a kichil, uh, kichil Indonesian, coffee shop, you know, very cute, you know, and they prepare the coffee for you in front of you. And there are a lot of baristas, you know, or baristas want to be um, taking videos and photos of their own coffees. And they want to introduce um, to you a lifestyle. So what I am trying to do, like Starbucks start, start to do it like long ago, was selling you something that is cool in your life. You don't need a coffee. With a coffee in your hand, you look so cool, you know, especially if you take the selfie, you know, your coffee. I went in this coffee, you know, hashtag uh, life uh, is only once, YOLO, you know. So you actually, I mean, me, I mean, us as a people, you know, we are looking for an identity in our lifestyle. So we want something that um, highlight our taste, you know, something that identify us. I'm, I'm using a, again that word identify because actually all the, um, all the, um, let's say the points that I'm going to cover about the equation, they go towards the thing, the same thing, identity. You know, it's like I, I have my own voice and I want to, make others to listen my voice. I have my brand, I want my brand to reach others. I have my ideas and I want to sell my ideas to others. So at the end is to sell ourselves or sell something that we have or a need, a service, a product, X things, is something that we want to show. It, in few words is communicate. Communicate what? Something that might likes you. What it likes you? Something that might identify, it, it can identify with myself. You know, it's like that, it's cycle, okay? Uh, moving forward, um, I separate all these things, you know, by the, by the samples that I will ask in a bit uh, active to show it. Um, okay, you can find you can find celebrities or public viewers online. Uh, let's say talking about um, pre pre COVID, okay, pre COVID nineteen. So there were celebrities that they have the amount of followers. Let's say one million followers, five hundred thousand followers. And you don't even know what the kind of lifestyle these people have. You know, you don't know what, what kind of things they like, what they can, what kind of things they do during the day. They just post pictures and doing cool things and, and stuff like that. And you just follow and like, 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 like. But then when pandemia came, those celebrities do not have too much to show, you know. And then the new celebrities, the new celebrities, I, I'm saying the new celebrities are those people nowadays are trying to sell a something like entrepreneurs you know during this pandemic COVID, i will show you the five uh life hacks in order to be successful and to have money in your pocket and to have a nice life even when the there is not money around you know they they try to sell something like, like the solution to your problems so these new celebrities i'm talking about post covid now i guess or either they were lucky or they found you know the way how to approach to others first by having the identity of, oh my God, I don't have money, I don't have job, so I have to do something before someone else, you know, uh, wins what I'm looking for, you know? So these people move one step forward and did many interesting jobs that years ago I was thinking, this job or this kind of um, service can be really interesting, but I don't see too much future in it. And boom, COVID happened and the business was successful. One of these businesses, is this one that um, is called Happy Fresh, for example, you know? I never imagined that the market can send someone to your house, you know, um, 
tomatoes, potatoes, a lot of things that you need every day. You know, usually you go to the market, you go with your plastic bag, not allowed plastic bag, you go with your own with your own bag, you buy your own things, blah, blah, blah. You go back, you put it everything in your car, you go back home. So you create like a routine of things that are supposed to be done um, normally. But the new normality say you have to stay at home, okay? But you need to eat, <laughs> you have needs. And these happy fresh guys, they say, okay, let's sell, let's send people food to their houses. Fresh food, everything is the best selection of the food ever. And sound if I saw one of these boxes here in front of my house, like I never thought that I'm going to buy a happy fresh box, you know, <laughs> from these guys. And it worked. It was a business like someone saw the pandemic as a um, uh, dilemma of what to do and not to do. And they saw the opportunity and they did it quite well. Like that, they have many other examples. And this will be the moment where Octave has to help me out with some uh, screenshot that I sent to her. So I will take each topic. Okay, let's go with the first one. And is that my tree? Yeah, is that my, my tree? That's correct. One by one, please, Octave. Okay, one by one. My tree. Okay, these guys are a special case. Look how followers they have, how much followers they have, sorry. These guys are uh, into classic music, soprano. Um, they are people that they work for opera as well, you know? I mean, if I ask the question, how many people go to the opera and watch it, and how many people likes to listen this kind of classic music, um, I will get a really low quantity uh, on that number because it's not a trend, you know? Classic music is not a trend. But these guys move one step forward, something that a group called Pentatonic, uh, Pentatonic, yeah, did long ago, which was make music sounds with a voice. So these guys gather together, and if you follow these guys and start to uh, find for some videos of them on YouTube, you'll find out that these guys become famous by making music with their voice only, you know, by creating uh, sounds effects, you know, and combine them all together and create them, for example, um, intro songs from animes or from TV series or from movies and even cell phone sounds. So were they lucky, you know, that they become famous because of that thing or they use that opportunity, that chance, that skill that they have in order to go a little bit beyond. So actually what they did is to add an extra, a plus to the service that they provide. They don't even sell themselves, you know, as a, as a band. The idea came, you know, suddenly, hey guys, we can do something so cool by using our voice and have like, thousands of followers and yes they did and it happened and it's a really success so these guys even have a world tours just to go to many countries to do a uh, sound effects with their voice and create music from it and look how many followers they got from 2000 uh, that was 2020 yeah post pandemic yeah uh, pandemic came they didn't have too much rehearsals you know they didn't have too much uh, uh, um, auditions they didn't have too much presentations and one of the guys got the idea, hey guys, let's do this and it worked. So from let's say 500 followers now to more than 100,000 followers in less than two years, yes. So actually they sell their service, which is their voice, plus that the cool thing that they have that is adding a special effects on it. Now, if I put it as part of the equation is like skills. Okay, if you have any skills, the skills sells. One, next, uh, please. Okay, Karen, I was talking about Karen before. This girl has a video where she explains herself how she become successful from also from 2020 when pandemic started, you know? And now in one year and a half, she got more than a million followers, million in two years. I'm not talking about bots, you know, that they, you just buy, you know, I'm talking about organic followers. I follow every single video, you know, she does silly, crazy things with uh, with things in her house, you know, and with a camera, with a, usually with a cell phone. And she explained herself in her video that uh, if everybody does it, why not me? You know, and the cool thing from this girl is that she got some, uh, let's say, uh, she was guest in other shows or with another Instagrammers or YouTubers. You know, she was a quiet girl, actually. She just was showing the tricks. And that is how she became quite famous. It's like, a, like Zach King. I don't know if you guys know Zach King. 
then this guy who likes to do uh, a lot of special um, visual illusions, you know, with a computer. The idea of Karen was like, hey, if somebody else does it, why not me? And come on, look at her, you know, in less than two years, she already got 1 million followers. And again, this is also focusing on the factor of skills. She has some skills. She's selling the fish. You know, she's not so and so methodical and telling you, okay, in order to achieve that, you need to know a little bit about the composition and lighting. No, no, no. She goes right away to sell the fish. This is my trick. I did it like that. Boom. One million followers. Please, next one. Uh, oh, Phoebe. Uh, it, she's a friend of mine, okay? Uh, how long was it? Mm, in June or May, if I'm not wrong, when she had around 1,000 followers, I asked her, hey, do you want to make a photo session? I mean, can I make a photo session with you? You know, I want to use your image. I want to create some cinematic shots around the city, blah, 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 blah. She said, oh, I'm so shy, I don't like the cameras. I'm so scared, I don't know what to do. I said, come on, just try it, give it a try. Okay, 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 but something happened and we didn't have the chance to meet each other. But someone else told her, yeah, go ahead, try it. Someone took a photo of her. I'm talking about April, uh, June, uh, May or June, approaches uh, this month. Somebody took a photo of her, you know, posing with nice clothes, a brand, X brand, I don't know. The thing is, suddenly, uh, People start to look first at the brand and second at her. Okay, she's a quite, uh, she's a pretty girl, you know, skinny, you know, like it's, that is another trend, being a skinny. And, and she looks quite okay. So what she started to do was doing endorsements. You know, hey, you want to sell your product? Give it to me, I will sell it for you. You know, she's selling her own image, okay? Her own image. And from May until this month, she got already 9,000 9, followers. I asked her, did you buy the, the, uh, the bots? Say, no, everything is organic based on the brands. So at the end, if you are someone and you make an endorsement with an X brand, it will work. But if you are a nobody and a nobody brand comes to you, it's going to be really difficult to build something unless you are selling something that is a trend. In this case, is in the case of, uh, of Phoebe is uh, clothes. She sells clothes, clothes brand, uh, brands. I don't know the name of the brands. Um, I think she works with more than one, but uh, those brands, I don't see them in Galaxy Mall or in Paco One, you know, I don't see them in the stores. You know, they are brands that they are people that they create by their own and they will need someone in order to sell it. So they need to use a fresh image. They cannot afford to pay a special model, a professional model or a celebrity. So they need to make this kind of fusion. You know, uh, I, I cannot say a nobody, but in the case of Phoebe, with less than 1,000 followers, you know, is technically it's a nobody. But with 1,000 followers, almost almost 10,000, you say, wow, this girl is quite someone, you know, and this brand is quite something good too. You know, I've seen many brands that they sell uh, nothing for hundreds of rupees, you know, and say, oh my God, this is nothing. But then another brand comes, you know, very humble brand selling something even better with better quality and so cheap that nobody knows about that brand. Nobody sells that brand. Nobody wants to buy that brand because it's not a trend, you know? Next one, please. Oh, Rikamus. Uh, this is a guy from Philippines. He's a friend of mine. And I don't know if you guys know a Studio Ghibli movies. Uh, they are, it's a studio that makes animation, anime. And maybe you hear about Totoro, you know, or the whole moving castle or spirit away. I'm pretty sure you know Studio Ghibli. So what Rikamus does is get inspiration from these movies and create, you know, soundtracks. He is working with a, a drawer. Her name is Heikala. I think Heikala is from Finland, if I'm not wrong. Heikala has, if I'm not wrong, almost a million followers. And this girl likes to use, likes to make beautiful uh, drawings and paintings, and she uses Rikamu's uh, music background. Okay, so she appreciates. Thank you, Rikamu's, for your music, and that is how Rikamu's uh, become, you know, quite famous. You know, let's say it's like a partnership or a collaboration. Someone that has more followers 
as soon you use something that belongs to you, let's say if you are selling a service, right away it's going to boost up your followers too. It's like a, you have to look for a celebrity. A few days ago, someone asked me, hey, uh, we are in a campaign. We are working in a campaign. And say, we need a celebrity here in Surabaya in order to sell something. And many people came to my head right away and I said, but we need to look someone that represents, you know, that brand or represents that what we are selling. We cannot just show X people and that's it, sell something. You know, you need to somehow lean your product or your service leaning towards the kind of characteristic that person has as well. And that is very important. That is what Rick Amos was doing. Since he was creating music based on Studio Ghibli and Heikala was making drawings technically based on animation, this guy just hung from her and quickly, you know, become quite famous. You know, in less than a um, few weeks, he got this 11,000 uh, followers. The issue is that now Rickamos is not doing so much uh, videos anymore. He's not making more music, but still, you know, and we are talking about in weeks, this guy reached this big number. And guess what? In some of my videos in my, on my Instagram account, you know, very old videos, I'm using some of his music, which has permission, of course. And he gave me some credit in, some, in, in his comments, you know, Alex from Peru is making beautiful editing videos with my music. So it's like a Man, I'm paying you back, you know, because I really enjoy your music. So I want to do something with your music. And yeah, that gives me, that gives him more followers because my followers follow him. And maybe some of their followers follow me, which actually happened. Uh, next example, please. Uh, am I going too fast, like flying? I don't know if people can catch my English or is that okay? okay. Uh, sorry. Maybe you are very fast. Maybe you are very fast. Please, oh. be, please be slow. Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure. My friend talked to me. You are so fast. Please translate it. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, guys. Slow. Sorry, guys. I know. I just remember English is not your your mother language. Same like me. Mine is Spanish. So yeah, I I I fly with my conversations, especially with my presentations. Sorry, guys, but I hope you catch as much as I spoke already. It's also a learning for our students, uh, Mr. Alex, because Spanish people tend to talk fast. And telenovela, I telenovela. Of it, and that's why when you speak English, it's like you feel like you're speaking Spanish and you make it fast. So maybe, mm. yeah, uh, thank you, Alif. Uh, and yes, please talk slower. Uh, sure, sure. Alex, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, telenovela is my background. So I work for TV. So everything is chapat, chapat, chapat. Um, sorry for that. Okay, taking again. Uh, this one is Temu. Okay. Temu is a guy from Sweden, from Norway. Okay, he's from Europe. Okay, and he moved to Asia a few years ago. This guy started with little videos on YouTube showing his good skills on videography. Okay, that's all. Most of the shots or most of the videos were taken at night, yeah, which is actually very hard for people there that is into video or photography, which is very hard to make some beautiful shots at night. Unless you have a crowded city with a lot of lights around and a lot of life at night, yeah. But here in Surabaya, you have a lot of motorcycles and you cannot walk anywhere. So this guy started to make amazing videos on YouTube. No followers at all, just people saying, man, your videos are amazing. I love your style, blah, blah, blah. Until someone asked him, hey, bro, how do you do it? Tell me, what is your secret? You know, so again, skills. So this guy, Timo, what he started to do was on Instagram, post his photos and how he achieved these photos by the little explanation, you know, on the, on, on the comments. So someone asking again, bro, can you make videos on YouTube explaining how you reach, how you make your um, uh, your photos or videos, and he start to do it. Now, I'm not lying if I say that I followed this guy when he had um, 9,000 no, 9, or 7,000 followers, seriously. Uh, I'm talking about post pandemics because I met this guy when he was in quarantine, okay? During quarantine, uh, quarantine sorry, he had 8,000 followers, and now he has 80,000 and everything was about skills. I have the same skills like that guy. And I'm still wondering, you know, how to 
reach that number, you know? And it's not I'm going to ask in the secret because there is not any secret actually into this thing. There is kind of like a factors that you need to have in consideration. You need to have in consideration if you want to sell something. This guy, again, is selling skills, but he's adding the plus. He's adding something extra, which is night photography and video photography, which is really hard to do especially for people that have, uh, I'm, I'm talking to photographers or videographers right there in the group, that they don't have mm, good equipment that can be uh, very useful when there is not too much light on it. You know, I'm a filmmaker, so if there is not light, there is not movie, simple like that. So working with low light or few light is very hard. And this guy is doing very amazing shots. You know? So all people who want to learn something, look at Timu and say, okay, all of us, guys, let's go in that direction and let's learn from him. Even if I knew about all these tricks, I wanted to follow him because first I wanted to look for inspiration. And this is something that I mentioned before. This is actually content, content for good, something that Karen does. But different, uh, the difference with Karen is that Karen is selling the fish, okay? And Timu is teaching you how to catch the fish. The problem with these two people, or the difference with these two people, is that the one that sells the fish itself gets more followers than the person that teach you how to catch the fish. Why? Because in a nowadays, when everything is chepat, 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 quickly, 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 you don't have time to stay in front of the computer for 10 or 15 minutes. You want to be in front of your cell phone or your computer for one minute only. And especially when you have these YouTube advertisements that they only stand for five seconds, you want to die when somebody got advertisements, I have to wait for five seconds. Yeah, you have to wait for five seconds. Five seconds is nothing, okay? It's nothing. And, then, and you have this advertisement that stands for 30 seconds or one minute and you want to skip right away, skip, 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 because you want to see right away the video. You want to consume something quickly and that's it. Bye-bye. You are not stopping on Instagram stories one by one and reading today, I feel sad because blah, 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 blah. Hashtag whatever, hashtag whatever, hashtag whatever. Hashtag blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't want to do that. You skip it. Oh, this person posts like a 12 Instagram videos. I skip it to the next person, you know. So when you skip it, you are uh, losing the chance or let's say that person is losing the chance to get a follower. But what happened with Timu compared with Karen? Karen has 1 million followers, but those million, those, that million followers are not hardcore fans of Karen's stuff. They are just followers because they saw something cool that Karen was doing with her cell phone. Oh, I like this thing. I like this girl. Like, Suda, follow, Suda. Do I follow Karen often? No. But when Timo posts something right away, actually Timo just posted something like one hour ago, and I wanted to watch it. Uh, because that's, that creates interest on me. I mean, if his video stands for 20 minutes, I will watch it for 20 minutes because I know that I will learn something cool. So when you create a content, you need to have in consideration, you want to sell the fish or you want to teach how to sell the fish, which at the end is resumed in the factor called content for good. Uh, next one, please, Octave. Is my speed better or? Yeah, I think, oh. I think uh, if you can talk a bit more slower, okay. uh, that would be great. Okay, speaking whale, like in Finding Nemo. Okay, uh, Paulus. Paulus is Suroboyo. Okay, Paulus is, is from here, from Indonesia. Mm. Okay, Paulus is like Timu. Okay, Paulus uh, teach you how to catch the fish. Um, he called himself a Sony guru because uh, he makes endorsements for Sony especially with the uh, alpha, uh, alpha brands. I worked with him a couple of times. We have some meetings. I really like to work with this guy. He's a very quiet guy. He just focus on the work only. Uh, but he had many workshops where he teaches um, the technical aspects of uh, Sony cameras. Everything's about Sony cameras. Audio, video, editing, post-production, and this guy and his team are really good guys. I mean, they really know what they're doing. So far from Suraboyo, I think he's one of the most professional guys into this uh, cinematography arena. The thing with Paulus, if you can see his followers, 
uh, he has 8,000 something, yeah, if I'm not wrong, 8,000 something. Since I met him when he has 700, until now, I'm talking about 2016, until now, I mean, it's not a good grow, right? I mean, if we talk about numbers, you know, you haven't grown so much in the last six years. Is that the problem? I don't know. I mean, for someone who wants uh, followers quickly, yeah, I mean, it's a problem. But for someone who is focusing, you know, only on selling Sony, Sony, Sony's, but teaching you how to use them and how you can achieve amazing things with those cameras. Yeah, I mean, you just shrink the market and that market is just people who want to know about technological stuff um, with cameras, that's all. So his market re get reduced. I don't know if I ask you guys, if you are not into communications and if you are a random people, I mean, you can say, hey, do you want to follow this guy? What for? You know, I mean, I don't need it. I don't want a Sony camera. I don't want to learn about these things. But as people who really want to know about these technological aspects, especially here in this in this city, yeah, I will follow him. So actually, his car, his uh, hardcore fans are really, really um, strong. From these eight thousand followers, I'm pretty sure eight thousand followers wants to know that content from Paulus because they are interested into, into Sony um, here in Indonesia, especially in Surabaya. But if I, ask you, if I ask you about Karen with a million followers, how many followers are interested to see Karen's uh, content often? You get my point? And I made a comparison between Paulus and Tim, Timu, because Timu um, has something extra. He's not just showing you how to, He's also showing you the results with an aesthetic way. So he's, choose, he's uh, teaching you how to do it, how to achieve it, and this is the result. Enjoy it. You know, it's like looking at his work, it's like, oh my God, so beautiful. Paulus is more technical. He showed you the capacity or the capability of this equipment. He showed you a couple of reels or videos that, you know, uh, they are very important to see, you know, how amazing the videos are. But that's it. You know, I'm. Mean, not something you know so beyond. If it's true that Paulus works with uh, other people as a private, uh, as a private worker, you know, to make I don't know video clips or advertisement, that is another story. But when we talk about he working with Sony cameras and giving workshops, he just focuses on the technical aspects. Next one, please. Okay, this is the same example uh, like Karen. These guys uh, from Media Division, they are my favorite guys on Instagram. These ones are uh, radical technical people. You know, if we talk about films, uh, I mean, the technical aspect of films, it's from lenses, cameras, filters, lights, audio, blah, blah, blah. These guys are top notch. I mean, they are extremely professionals. Uh, one of the most amazing contents that I found on Instagram on YouTube are coming from these guys. But look the followers on YouTube and look the followers on Instagram. Many people give comments and they say, guys, your channel and your Instagram account should have millions of followers, millions. Yeah, which is actually, I'm really, uh, I'm agree with that. You know, they should have, they should have. But the problem is they are not focusing to sell their amazing skills. If you see their videos of how to, what for, and why, I mean, or either you get bored after 15 minutes or you get amazed by the amazing content. I'm talking about uh, for people in the, um, into video, okay? And photography. You will love the content of these guys if you really want to learn technical aspects from, from, from them. The issue is like, uh, they want to sell more, but they don't achieve more because if we talk about the market again, that market is very little. They are just aiming to that kind of people. So if you if they promote, which actually they have a lot of promotions online, if they promote, uh, let's say, um, we are selling lenses for this special discount, are those 11,000 followers going to buy those lenses? Maybe one, maybe two, maybe nobody, but we are not talking about 
a huge number of people that they are, they, they will know about that, that advertisement, if you get my point, right? So they are selling the fish, they are selling how to catch the fish, they are selling even how to cook the fish, but still, you know, no followers. I mean, there is something wrong in the equation. Yes, there is something wrong. And the next examples are going to tell, are going to tell you what is wrong with the equation. Next one, please. Okay. Okay, Nomad. Uh, Maria, Maria is a girl from Chile. I met her in the United States, 2010? Yeah, around 2010. She's a journalist, okay? So for people, journalists in there. She's a journalist and loves to travel a lot. One day, this girl say, I want to start to travel and write, you know, my experiences, experiences on the trip. I remember when this girl was commenting on her own Instagram stories, guys, are you agree if I create um, uh, video blogs about my experiences? Are you agree if I start to creating um, a YouTube channel or a platform that helps me to tell you my stories about my trips? And her videos were focusing on her experiences with guys from other countries, the food, the amazing weather, the low prices in other cities. And that's all. It is catchy. It is catchy. Seriously, you want to listen what she has to say about every single city or country, either the food or the kind of living in there, you know, you learn about those things. The thing with Maria is like a, in one of her videos, she says, these ones are my tricks to become successful in social media. One of them is be honest. Every, con every country that she was visiting, she was telling with, um, with truth which ones were the good things and the bad things of that country. Which actually, in other, uh, you know, with other bloggers, they just want to show the beauty of the country or the city. They want to show the luxury of the country, of the city, of the hotels, of amazing things that you can find in that city only. Because the other bloggers are thinking just in the possibility to enjoy your uh, experience as a, you know, as a tourist as maximum as possible. But in the case of Maria or Fran, which is her second name, in the case of Fran, is different. She focusing more in the experience, in experience of a backpacker, you know. I go to this place, I only have $20 in my pocket. What can I do in Madrid, in Madrid, Spain, with $20? And she tells you about it. With $20, I bought this, I bought that, blah, blah, blah. I travel here, I travel there, I walk here, I walk there. And you as a viewer, you really want to know because uh, inside of us, we want to have the same experience that she has. And this one touches the factor of living style, you know, like. Social media is to show only living style. You know, you want to have the most and coolest experience ever with your daily life. You know, like what I was saying that Starbucks selfie, you know, I'm drinking Starbucks, you know, it's cool, it's awesome. You know, you want to show that you are living well. Nobody posts on Instagram, I'm sad today. Um, this is my selfie, sad today, and this is my tear. No, nobody, no, nobody posts that. <laughs> Instagram or social media in general is just to post happiness. That's it, happiness, everything's clean. Everything is Korean style, you know, everything is beautiful, pristine. In case of Fran, it's not like that. Fran sells the experience itself and that you can identify with herself. So in few words, actually she's selling the experience to enjoy that kind of things. Uh, moving forward, actually, please, Octave, there is another uh, Instagrammer that has the same style like Fran, but later, Ken, yeah, Ken. I met Ken uh, in a photo session. He was the model, a very humble guy, very quiet guy. He doesn't even look like a like a model. He just posed for my camera for a for a brand. We we're selling a brand of clothes, and we become friends right away. He said, "Hey, I want to learn Spanish." Okay, let's go ahead. So I met I met Ken in 2019, 2020, at the beginning of 2020. Yeah, okay. And Ken, by that time, had 21,000 followers. I knew that he was focusing on amazing trips, enjoying the luxury of those trips, you know, going to uh, fancy hotels, fancy cities, which is actually really cool. And I'm pretty sure many people can afford that. But since 2020, until now, look how many followers he has. 
you know, this is one of the most amazing cases here in Surabaya that I met people being successful on Instagram right away based on also experiences. And he goes to first class flights, first class five star, six star hotels, you know, resorts, amazing places. And he's doing the same thing as Fran, you know, he's not just selling the beauty of these places, he's selling the experience in those places. Okay, or I, I am either Fran or I am either Ken. I'm like Fran, I don't have the money. So I will enjoy those places like Fran. But if I have the money, this guy is selling me those places and I will, on my checklist, I will say, okay, next place to visit this country. Even during pandemia, you know, his followers were not going down. He got even more followers because in that pandemia, we have like a kind of, um, let's call it, everybody crashed, you know, everybody was feeling at home, stressed, uh, you know, living in the same place with the same people, looking at each other every time. And it was quite stressful. So one of the, one of the first products that was sell right away were cars because people wanted to go outside the mountains and packages, you know, trick packages because people, especially the owner of hotels and resorts, they were expecting as soon pandemia leaves, we have to sell these packages right away. A lot, uh, we are going to reduce our packages from 100% to 20% only, you know. And Ken is doing that. He's not taking advantage. He was very smart to take the pandemia, yeah, as a way of living by showing these ones are the future luxury destinations. Wait until the pandemic is over and come here because there is discount here, discount that, blah, 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 blah. King is, I guess, one of the smartest way how he took advantage of pandemia. And uh, just look at by himself, he's enjoying really amazing life, plus the experience to enjoy. Thank you, please, the next one. Okay, this is for my weirdos, for weird people who likes weird stuff. And, if I show this kind of content to my family, especially to my mother, you know, they will say, oh my God, what such a horrible creatures, you know, I don't like this kind of things. These things is horrible. You know, how come there is people that they love that kind of things? Look at the number of followers. Yeah, this content is based of people who work into makeup, photography, sculpture, and painting. And they create all this together, this kind of weird content. You know, it's one of my favorites. I, I mean, if you like this kind of kind of dark art, you know, like kind of weirded or Lovecraft style, this guy is uh, actually, and many others, is the, the guy that you're looking for. I like the art from this guy, uh, from this guy, sorry, because I find it inspirational. You know, and again, I'm, I'm talking topic, I'm taking the topic of um, content for good. You know, this person is not teaching you how to achieve that, but is giving you the ideas how you can get out of the box. You know, many artists, uh, I met a girl here, uh, she's a makeup artist. She posts every single day, she posts uh, how she makes crazy makeup with herself, you know, um, and she gets the followers based on the craziness that she does. You know, when she goes out of the box with her makeup, that is how she follows. The, she gets the attention from us. When when she goes and shows that how beautiful her makeup are, uh, is for a wedding bride, maybe the likes from the family or maybe the likes from some friends, and that's it. So when I see the makeup artist posting faces of random women with makeup on them. I don't see how they get the like. Maybe they might get the likes from prospective brides to me, you know, like, okay, I like the makeup from this girl. I will give her a like and follow her and maybe call her. Or you go out of the box like this. Um, there is another example that I will tell you. Uh, you will see it in a bit. That he goes out of the box and he makes makeup on himself uh, or like, the, like this girl from Surabaya that it's like, a, wow, you have a talent with your makeup, you know, skills. So again, she's selling a content for good and also skills. I will follow you because I like your content, not because I want to have makeup with myself. And this is a part that I wanted uh, 
take in consideration because there are many brands of makeup brands that they create some tools or applications in order to have augmented reality. And that is related to technology. So any anyone now can put some filter on your camera and have a dog ears, you know, and crazy things. But these guys from the makeup companies, they create applications for that in order to make look women, you know, beautiful with their products, you know, and you can change the color, the aesthetics, the, the shapes and stuff like that. So somehow we go to the first part, again, to the factors, social commerce. You know, you are selling um, your product based on technology. So there are two factors they are getting together now. From all the factors that I mentioned, again, you can use all of them, it can work. You can remove some of them, it can work. You can add new ones, it can work, you know, but it's not guaranteed that it's going to be often, you know, I mean, it's, it's not going to be always like that. Uh, next one, please, next one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Jerry. Uh, Jerry Friends, um, this guy is a professional model. He was a professional model. He quit. And he started to do uh, reviews about perfumes. Yeah, I follow him since three years ago. Yeah, three, four years ago. And because this is weird to, to explain. How, how come you become so famous by selling perfumes smell? What he does is like a versus. Dolce Gabbana versus uh, Yves Saint Laurent. And he put it together, spray here, spray there. And he makes a comparison of the perfume. This one smells like a summer in 1998, blah, blah, blah. And this one smells like, I don't know, winter. So he makes comparisons of perfumes. I don't know you guys, but there is no technology yet, you know, to, to send smell to your cell phone. But guess what? You want to buy the perfume. You want to buy the perfume. You want to know, oh my God, this top 10 perfumes, you know, from, for summer, you know, in Europe. This guy gives you the top 10 smells for summer for guys. And you want to buy at least one of them. So this is a kind of, uh, let's say, contradiction among the other factors, you know, how they work together. And if you remove them and you add a new one, how this one can be possible? This is like a new way to selling. I mean, how come you cannot smell the perfumes and you want to buy it is because this guy says the truth. So his knowledge about perfumes and about uh, how do they smell, how amazing they are, is based on his truth, his honest. He doesn't say his, this perfume is much better than this one. He's giving you options. And by options, I go by mm, living a good style, you know, living, having a good life style. I don't need the perfume in my life, but I want it. There is a big difference. And this guy creates the need. You don't have that need, but it creates it. It's very smart, this guy. It's very smart because he's giving you options. At least one of them, you're going to pick it up as your favorite. And in, your, in the future, in your mind, you will say, I want to buy this perfume. I want to buy this perfume. So when you go to the mall, you go to the store, just test it. How much is it? Well, Two million rupees, no, sorry, <laughs> next time. Yeah, but you already program yourself to go and look for the perfume because you wanted to know how it smells thanks to this guy who was telling you with honestly how the smell of the perfume is. Next one, please. Mm, I cannot see. Oh, Jessica Joffen. Jessica, right? If I'm not wrong. Is it Jessica Joffen? Okay. No, uh, another thing that was sold pretty well during pandemic were bicycles. I know I don't know you guys if you are in a group of biking groups, you know, going outside the city and recording yourself and posting on Instagram the track around, you know, ah, oh, today we're 24 kilometers, I'm so exhausted, and now it's coffee time. The case of Jessica, uh, before pandemic, I make a couple of photos and one video. I mean, I use her image to promote the camera here in Surabaya. And she was selling this kind of athletic image of a woman, you know, that, uh, that her lifestyle is 
working with herself, you know, with her own body. It's a healthy life, eating well, doing exercise, enjoying time, enjoying fashion because many brands uh, gave them clothes to, to, to wear. And it's like, a, I want to be like this girl. I mean, I'm talking about girls, you know, I want to be like this girl. I want to be cool and sportive and look awesome and fresh like Jessica Shohan. But then pandemia, pandemia, pandemia came. So Jessica had to look for the new trend and the new trend were bicycles. So if you see maybe the, the last 20 photos are related to bicycles, you know, the 20 last posts, you know, because that was the trend in that moment during pandemic. Everybody was stressful at home. Hey guys, let's make a little community of bikers and let's get out of here of Surabaya to the mountains or blah, blah, blah. And this girl has to look, you have to look for the chance of create an identity. Okay, my identity is an athletic person. I will use the new trend, which is um, uh, which are the bicycles and make a fusion on it. Yeah, she used two factors, good living style and selling the product. Boom, together. It's magic. I'm not saying that she has millions of followers. That is more than enough for someone who, this, this, who does this kind of lifestyle. I'm pretty sure there are many women that they would like to have that quantity of followers, but what they do, you know, they, 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 uh, they do exercise, they do biking, but they don't reach those numbers. Jessica is a perfect example of on smart in a moment of, you know, say of problems, make a fusion with one factor, another factor, and boom, get success. Next one, please. Oh, okay, Julia. Julia, as Jessica, is also, a, she's a gamer. Julia Nakamura, look how many followers she has. And I'm, I'm one of them, of course. Julia Nakamura is the softest example of many streamers, YouTubers, uh, Instagrammers out there. I'm talking about this kind of girls that they use their attributes, you know, their physical attributes to get numbers. There are many online players that are out there, you know, from Asia, from any country, that they wear less clothes in order to catch guys. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Guys that they are into, into video games, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys maybe saw one of these girls, you know, these girls that they are trying to show their attributes. You don't know what they are playing at. You just want to see the girl. <laughs> you know, they are playing, I don't know, Pokemon something, okay. The girl is pretty, okay, let's follow her, you know. And they create numbers based on their physical attributes. I don't know if Julia Nakamura is an expert gamer, but she's pretty girl. She's a pretty girl, seriously. And many people, I don't know if you watch Attack on Titan, which is an anime quite famous, everybody compare her with one of the characters on, on Attack on Titan, uh, Mikasa Ackerman. And if she makes a cosplay of uh, Mikasa Ackerman, everybody will give like to her. So the issue with Julia is that uh, her beauty was the reason of her success, plus the fact that she's a gamer. Now, is she a good gamer or we don't know. I mean, you have to follow her streams and follow her, you know, playing. She ha she's representing some, a couple of brands that they are into computers. Um, I don't know the name of the brands. And I don't know if I'm going to buy one of these brands. I'm just following Julia because the beauty that she has, you know, uh, that is another, another factor that is, more, is very important. We can put it into a skills, yeah? But I will put it more into the, the fact that you have something to sell without working so much. In this case, selling the beauty or your physical attributes, you know, your body, I'm, I'm talking about the body. There is an opposite case, you know, with a Korean brand of clothes. Uh, this Korean brand sells clothes for fat women. Yeah. And this brand, it has also thousands of followers because when I'm talking about identity again, they are women that they don't feel so pretty or so attractive like these girls online, you know, playing. But they feel identified with themselves, with this woman that they are a little bit chubby. You know, a little bit fat here, 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 here. So they know that it's going to be maybe impossible for them to have a, an amazing shape, which is okay. You know, I mean, you accept yourself as you are. But there is a brand who was thinking on them and creating clothes for them. So I'm pretty sure that all those followers of those brands are hardcore fans. You know, they are. 
if, if, if that brand has 500,000 followers, it means that 500,000 followers want to know about the content of that brand. Sorry. Oh. But in the case of Julia, if Julia plays good or not, I don't know, but her beauty is selling it by itself. Teman-teman, ini ada yang nggak di mute, tolong ya di. Oke, 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 Mr. Alex. Um... Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Oh, this is Olivia Samantha. She's uh, my muse. She's in most of my videos and photographs. Uh, this is, I guess, the best example for you guys if you want to start from scratch, okay? Olivia start with, when I met her in before pandemic, yeah, she started with 800 followers, something like that, okay? And she said, I am a dancer, I'm a ballerina dancer, and if you want to have some videos or photos with me, this is my price, you know? I said, okay, okay, let's reach an agreement. So what her desire, her wish was to be in a spot by a brand here, you know, that she can represent, you know, she's a quite really pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. If you see her in person, she's a pretty girl. So, but there is not a, you know, a academy for professional models that they are hiring models right now, you know, especially during pandemic. <clears throat> so in the, case of, in the case of her, it's like, a, okay, let's make a photo session and let's see what happens. I will send it to a couple of friends that they have some model agencies here. So let's see. The model agency say, yes, I like her, she's pretty, why not, let's try it. The issue is that she was not so lucky. All the likes and comments that she got on her photos, on her work, were made by people from abroad Indonesia, not from Indonesia itself, not even from Surabaya. You know, most of the comments and likes were from other guys from other countries. I love your art, I love your style, you're a beautiful ballerina, I wish you are here in my country, which happened once to her. She went to Malaysia for a photo session. But it's like a, you are in this kind of conflict between being an Instagrammer and using your image, you know, as a um, after selling point, or just use your Instagram account to reinforce, you know, your, I don't know, your skills as a dancer, as a ballerina. She doesn't have too much followers, but she's happy with that. Because she say, I never thought that in these last two years, I couldn't achieve this kind of numbers because there were people that they, was, they were following not just my art as a dancer, they were following the art of people making photos and videos of me. So she got a combination of followers, like me, for example, and many other videographers, filmmakers, and photographers, and a lot of ballerinas. What she created, what she created was a bridge between these two people, these, these two groups. Many videographers and photographers ask for other dancers, friends of hers, you know, from the same academy, for photo sessions, even ask her to be a model. And vice versa, many dancers, they found a new way to show their skills, not by posting, you know, a video recorded with a cell phone, but recording or having a photo session with professional photographers or professional videographers. They say, I want to sell and something that is a trend right now in Japan and Korea is to sell a video profile. And that, and that takes the first input or the first uh, factor from my equation, which is media, photos, videos, and audios. So before in the past, in order to have a profile, you take a photo of yourself and that's it. You know, if you want to show your skills, I show my photos and videos and that's it. But when is when you want to sell yourself? you know, and your skills. You make a video or a photo session of yourself doing or performancing those, sk those skills. I don't know if performancing exists, or performing, sorry, performing those skills. So in this case of Olivia, in one of her videos and photo session, she looks so good that Honda called her for a photo session and, and published it at a big banner in here in Surabaya for a Honda Fit, if I'm not wrong during Christmas last year. Yeah, during Christmas last year, 
She was called by Honda and said, I want you to become the model of the Honda Fit here in Surabaya. Boom, they make a photo session with Honda, blah, blah, blah. And in a big, big, uh, big billboard, you know, she become quite famous, you know, her face doing a beautiful movement of a ballerina with a Honda Fit next to her. Now she say, I'm so happy with the number they have, but that somehow I achieved my goal that was that thanks to my skills of a dancer with a professional videographer and photographer, I achieved my goal to be on a big billboard. It's a little goal, right, for, for her, but it means a lot for her, actually. You know? Next one, please. Um, oh, Michael Slee. Michael Slee, and this is talking about, uh, somehow talking about tradition. Um, personalized marketing, yeah. Michael, Michael Slee, uh, I know the guys know the owners, then uh, they, are, they are family, uh, I'm going to be honest, they are family, okay? So the thing is that Michael Slee, number of followers, is based on the tradition of this brand. If I ask anyone here, hey, do you know Michael Slee? And say, yeah, I know Michael Slee, yeah, their, their puddings are amazing, their desserts are amazing. But before the era of Instagram or Facebook, that family business was already fa famous. So they drag, they drag the whole, let's say, uh, I cannot say fans, but followers of the, of the brand, you know, people that they trust in that brand and the quality of the brand. And they brought it into the digital era, you know, into Instagram. I don't know if they have Facebook account, but uh, for me, Instagram is more than enough to see that those 21,000 followers are the followers that they were only, always with them, plus the new ones. And they just need to post their photos with their amazing cakes. You cannot eat them, you cannot smell them, you cannot taste them, of course, but you know that that represents a good quality. And again, this is something similar like Jeremy. Um, Jeremy Fragrance selling the truth, same as um, Michael Slees. You know, they sell very good quality products, uh, content, service, you know, um, and this is what you get. You know, you get, a, you get followers that they are become hardcore. They follow your brand forever. And... Next time when you want to think in the pudding, next time you will think in Michael Slee or in another brand. So you always will bring back Michael Slee into your head. I mean, if you guys know the brand, of course. Next one, please. Almost done, almost done. Don't worry, guys. I cannot see. Oh, uh, this is the sample of the artist I was telling before, the makeup artist. Um, he's a makeup artist. Uh, he just focuses on brides and most of the time women, you know, to make them look pretty. But this guy started to do something cool. Uh, if you have the chance to see his Instagram account, he makes an artistic perspective uh, drawing using his face as a canvas. I just follow him for that, you know, I just follow this guy because of that. I mean, I really like his art, you know, I really like how he plays with the makeup. You know, I mean, he's not working in, a, in the industry of films. He's not doing makeup for, for movies. He's just doing makeup for living. And look at the quantity of followers that he has worldwide, just to show his amazing skills with that, with the skill that he already got that is makeup into something new, a plus. You know, so if you guys want to sell something, you should either a service or a product, you should think in what you are giving extra. You know, like I was saying before, out of the box, you need to go out of the box of something, maybe to sell something. I'm not saying that you have to do something crazy. You have to do something that is not, that people do not see often on the same way. You know, show me something different from the product that you are selling. I'm pretty sure people will buy. At least we'll give a like. Next one, please. Finish? I think this is, yeah, I think this okay. is. Okay. That's it. I think I cover almost, yeah, almost everything. It feels so weird. Seriously, I feel like Dora the Explorer just talking, talking, talking. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were there. Uh, so far, in Zoom, um, when I'm talking about the factors, uh, you need to have in consideration that you can have the most amazing product to sell. But if you don't have in consideration these factors, your content has to be less than one minute, really quick, has to be sell faster, you know, you have to sell with the truth. 
need to use technology involved. You need to personalize your product. Um, you need to sell me something, a content for good, something that's going to be useful for me. And you have to sell something that um, is going to give me a benefit, you know? And, and of course, using the Indonesian market has to be something new, a trend. You can combine this with this, boom, you get something. I think that is how it works so far, how to read trends in social media, especially in Instagram. It feels like a, you don't have the special formula, but you know that all those factors inside the equation are important to have in consideration. So you cannot just come here with, I create an amazing something and that's it, sell it. Sometimes maybe as many people ask me, we need a celebrity, we need someone important you know, to sell it because they think that this is the only way. It's one of the ways, but it's not the only one. You know, it's one of the ways. And yeah, a celebrity can show your product. Today I'm tasting this amazing product, which is actually many people do endorsements, you know, online, which is not bad, but it's not the only way either. So at the end, um, there is a formula. <laughs> Sorry? Somebody, somebody has something, Opti? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Oh. So in Zoom, uh, there is not a formula, but there is the factors that you need to have in consideration if you want to read a trend online. For me, it was quite hard to, to get attached to someone that every time is posting things and I follow that person or that content, I just skip it because it's like every day they are posting something and so annoying, it's the same, it's repetitive. Being repetitive and constantly going live or posting things, it's not a guarantee either that you are, your content has a quality content, you know, uh, sometimes it's so repetitive that it's so annoying that you just want to, at the end, unfollow that thing. You know, I, I've seen many people that they, they post every day the same thing with different, just different vision. It's like, a, oh, come on, unfollow, not unfollow, just mute, you know, mute posts from this person, mute posts from this brand. And it happened on YouTube, especially when you have the, I, I will not say name of brands, yeah, but you have a brand about food popping up from time to time, from time to time. At the end, you hate that brand. They are bombarding you all the time with the same brand that you don't want to look any more advertisements from that brand anymore. You don't want to eat their food anymore. So you have to be very careful and you have to create expectation that your next post is going to be, oh my God, this post is amazing. It's from my favorite Instagrammer and it's after one week. Like in the case of Fran, you know, who she travels to any uh, different countries and she saved her post for three, four days and to say, guys, my post tomorrow, don't worry. I'm going to talk about this, 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 and that. I want to see that content. Or like the case of Timu, you know, uh, his videos for me are, even if I know the content that he has, I just want to see more. I want to learn more. You know, doesn't mean that by throwing quantity, you will get quality from it. So there are two different things, especially in social media. There is a lot of bad quality content, a lot of garbage, garbage uh, content. From there, it's up to you how do you take what you need, what you want, and what you need to use in order to sell. It's not so easy. Again, there is not formula. It's just that you need to have in consideration factors. That's all. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Mr. Alex. Uh, okay, teman-teman mungkin ada yang mau bertanya, kita masih ada 15 menit mungkin ya. Oke, okay, Dava, silahkan. Oke, okay. uh, good afternoon Mr. Alex. Hello. So let me introduce myself first. My name is Devan Opal. So my question is, I consider that we're talking about selling point around here, or perhaps about segmentation, about our content. And I believe that it will be pretty much easier if our selling point is something that we like or something that we love. Yeah, But yeah, what yeah, if right, our right. interest? Yeah, yeah. What if right. our interest or our selling point is that? We like that we like is somehow against the trend. Mm -hmm. Somehow yeah. against the, the yeah. what I say. you create the trend, you create the need, right? Um, yeah, my point is I mean, is it prohibited? Is it uh, forbidden? But should we change our point 
at selling or should we bring uh, extra innovation around there? What do you think uh, about that? Innovation, innovation is not always a, a guarantee of, um, I don't know, I've seen, for example, the Pokemon Go, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember the Pokemon Go, that everybody was crazy, you know, about Pokemon Go, and someone mentioned, okay, augmented reality is going to be the trend for video games now. It was innovation, right? It was an innovation on this time. Everybody was crazy on the streets trying to catch Pokemon Go. But then after a few years, what is the augmented reality on video games? You know, unless you buy your Oculus, you know, and you play online, but not necessarily innovation is synonymous of, of selling, not necessarily. I, I, I was using the example of Surabaya as, or Indonesia in general, as people that like new trends to try new things, okay? But doesn't mean that that thing that you are trying has a good quality at the end. At the end, like, like it happened, you know? Your amazing cells are going to happen in the days where people is trying it for the first time, like the chicken with the rainbow ice cream on it. Everybody tries it. I'm pretty sure everybody say, this is a disaster. Not anymore. I don't want to try the chicken anymore. I don't want to buy the chicken anymore. And that's it, you know? The, the, the innovation <laughs> creating this kind of weird food finish in the same week, like everybody tried that food and that's all. No, I don't see anyone ordering gochek, you know, of that chicken with the rainbow ice cream on it. You know, uh, it's not synonymous that innovation is going to be always something that's going to create the trend. The trend. It can create a trend based on how good is your product and how honest you are with your product. And I don't see any reason. Uh, so I guess that you mean that innovation is not necessar necessarily. No, 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 innovation okay. is necessarily, but it's not a guarantee that you are going to to sell constantly, that you are going to sell often your products. Uh, let's say, like like Karen, you know, Karen is always creating new videos. One day, this girl is going to lack of imagination. You know, one day it's like, oh my God, I create so many things that I don't have more content to sell. So she needs to think in the next step with these amazing innovations that she has, she needs to apply it into, I don't know, into an advertisement, into a movie, into something new. And that is how she's still recycling their, their, you know, their products, you know, creating new things based on the old things. But one day if she runs out of ideas, who else is going to follow her? You get my point? Uh, okay, okay, thank you. So innovation is important, it's necessary, but it's not a guarantee that it's going to be, your product is going to be recycling often, you know, it's going to be on the market often. Like for example, you know, these uh, photographers, oh, videographers, sorry, that they like to do wedding videography. A few years ago, not a few years ago, a lot of years ago, wedding videography with this kind of cinematic look was amazing, you know, it's like, oh my God, this is a new trend. They, this is, everybody's going to make it, woo, I'm in. 10 years later, it's like a almost mandatory to have a cinematic animation during your wedding. If you don't have your cinematic animation during your wedding, you are a bad videographer, you don't know how to record videos, your product is a disaster, you know, it's like a, that innovation becoming something of nowadays package in a wedding uh in a wedding photo and video session now it's like a mandatory a video with cinematic look needs to be involved into the package now what is the next step for the videographers you know they have to do the the wedding cinematic look with video and they need to create something else you know it's like everybody become flat something that was going higher 10 years ago suddenly become flat there is nothing innovative anymore in that, uh, on that regardless. Uh, could I ask some more? Yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so you consider, uh, I mean, is it a must to follow the trend that booming nowadays? I, I, say again, please say again. Is it a must to follow the trend? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, a. Uh, like ships, you know, we are ships following the colors. We go forward, forward, forward. 
it, you have you have somehow to follow trends, but without involving those trends in your life. So do not become so um, do not depend, you know, on the trends. If tomorrow everybody says tomorrow we are going to shave our head and that is a symbolism to become Indonesian. I'm pretty sure you're going to have a lot of the population that will not follow that trend. You know, I mean, my point is like follow the trend, but do not let affect your daily life. It's like a, a just a few days ago, few few friends told me, hey, have you watched the Squid Game? I don't know if you guys watch it. Yeah. The Squid Game. No. Oh my gosh, the best show ever. Amazing. Oh, you are living in the past. You are in the dinosaurs era. So, What's wrong? I watched that Squid Game, which is really good, actually. It's really good. But then I realized, okay, I don't want to make it part of my life because nowadays everybody's talking about in social media about the Squid Game. Hey, you understand jo the jokes, you understand the memes, you understand everything now because you already watch it. Somehow I felt like the, the cattle, you know, following the uh, following the the ships, you know, oh yeah, yeah, I follow the trend, I follow the trend. Now, do I want to be part of the trend? No, not necessarily, doesn't need to affect my life. Do I need it? No, but it is necessary to have it somehow or be updated, yeah. And let's say Squid Game is a good marketing, it's actually amazing, it's like a phenomenon of marketing right now, right now. My mom never watched a Korean movie, but she watched the Squid Game because Netflix recommended, you know? <laughs> it's like, a, it's the perfect sample of how a good quality product, like which is Korea, you know, Korea sells very beautiful and good quality products, uh, are talking about movies and TV series. That is like everybody needs to eat that ice cream, you know? Korea's ice cream, the squid game, everybody has, everybody has to try it. It's like the boba tea, you know, the, the bubble tea that you guys drink here in Surabaya. There was a brand that came in Galaxy Mall uh, like a couple of years ago. You, if you see the, 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 the line, you know, the queue was so huge around the Galaxy Mall. I said, oh my God, what is the amazing thing of, of this bubble tea? I was there, I make my queue. I did in the bubble tea and I said, I find the same thing in the corner of my house, you know? <laughs> you know, there was nothing special, but I was part of the trend. I was part of the marketing, you know, I, I was involved in it. We are part of that marketing. If we pay attention to that, we are part of the marketing. If I watch a squid game, I was part of the marketing. I, I was one more piece in the whole puzzle. So you cannot live without, uh, without train. You need to follow it. You need to understand it, but just keep it aside. Do not ruin your life, you know, uh, that's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Alex. I think um, to simply conclude, um, what I'm getting from you is that it's okay to follow the trend, but don't forget your authenticity, you know, like, yeah, right, you have, right. yeah, right. Um, we have two more questions. Um, sure. Are you? Okay, thank you, Ms. Octave. Okay, good evening, Mr. Alex from Indonesia. Hello. Hello, my name is Ayu and I'm one of Miss Active student at UPN Veteran Jawa Timur. Oh, okay. First of all, I want to say glad to meet you even though we just met and talk via Zoom. <laughs> glad to meet you too. Okay, uh, here's my question. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I want to say sorry because I'm not turning, turning on my cam. Okay, here's my question. Uh, at this time, there are several cases of plagiarism uh, in case there is a content creator thinks that another content creator imitated, uh, imitated mm -hmm. their idea. Right now, uh, I haven't found the exact definition or the exact difference between inspired and imitated. Nah, as a content reader, what, what's the boundaries of a work or a content is imitated or used as inspiration in your opinion, Mr. Oh, okay, uh, and I want to formulate your question properly. I mean, is that okay to imitate other accounts that they are successful and use it on your benefit? Is that what you're asking? Uh, I think I, I want to know about the boundaries, I mean, the limit. 
uh, of content. imitate, I mean, of copy, you mean, uh, copy the content of others? Yes. Okay. I want to know, yeah. Uh, yeah will, thank you. In I, will separate, I will separate and I will call um, uh, inspiration and copy okay let's let's talk about this thing quickly okay. if i'm talking about if i'm talking about copy uh, like for example you have this guy called nas daily i don't know if you know that instagrammer that influencer nas daily he has millions of followers he always goes and travels around the world and talks about the amazing things it, it's everything amazing for him the amazing things of turkey this is turkey and everybody's just looking the amazing things of turkey they are other influencers or they are trying to copy his content in their location are pretending to say that they have they are even better than him and i don't know how to say it but the, the thing is that they copy paste you know the, the whole content nastail is very well known worldwide and this person is nobody yeah so i don't think he's going to have too much repercussion but what happened when you are nobody and you are doing something cool, something amazing, you have few followers, but there is another person with, I will not say better ideas, yeah, but I can say a person has think faster and smartest than your content, than yours, okay, that you. More money maybe, more income, more strategy, and has a, maybe a professional background. What happened if that person copy what you are creating from scratch? Legally, you cannot do too much. You complain to Instagram and that's it. Maybe the, the account can be closed or, you know, you don't know what happened. But so sorry, that person can get really high in short time just by taking your idea. And you are, you are going to become from nobody to a person who is trying to copy this person. When actually that, copy, that person copied from you. You know, that is totally wrong. That happens, that's life, and that is the... Life's in the sea, you know, the big fish eats the little fish. So the strongest wins. Sorry, it happens like that. But let's put it in the other situation when you have an influence from that. I'm pretty sure, I mean, all of us, when we create something from scratch, it's because we have the influence from someone else. If you write a book or if you create a video or if you create a photo session, you know, you have inspiration from something. And I don't think inspiration can be something negative, you know. I get inspired from the video, from the photos of Timu. And Timu gets inspired from the photos from another one, another photographer called Lian Wong, a very amazing photographer. So does it, mean that I'm, does it mean that I'm copying the work from Timu? And does it mean that Timu is copying the work from Liam? I don't think so, you know. Um, I think, get others ideas and apply it into your work especially in social media in, as an inspiration yeah why not hey guys you are using the same font you are using the same color you are using the same texture they are using the same you know diagram yeah come on that is a copy right but but if you change a little bit the font you change a little bit the, the colors you change the way how you organize your your Instagram account, let's call it influence, you know, let's call it an influence from the, somebody else's work. Thanks to that person, I got an idea that was not so well developed in my head. So constantly in my case, I'm looking for constant inspiration. I don't need to copy paste something from someone in order to show myself, to prove myself that I am capable of it. I guess like the best way to show my skills is by doing it by myself. If I get inspired by other one, I try to get the knowledge from that person and apply it into my my performance, my knowledge. Otherwise, what do I learn? Copy paste is easy and you can be success or not. That is another story. So, so from your explanation, there is not something pure, but everyone's got nah. in each other like that yeah there is nothing pure there is nothing pure there is always an influence from someone right now there is like the squid everybody's talking about again the squid games you know oh my god this is the best show from korea number one i never seen something like that but actually there are other references of squid game i don't know if you watch this japanese movie called battle royal or this anime called Gantz, or you know there are other references in the past, you know. It's not like these guys invent the fire, you know, or the or the wheel. You know, they are 
using inspiration from other work, from other masters, other filmmakers. You know? I mean, there is nothing pure, you know. Uh, pure is good and evil, that's it. But there is, there is always inspiration from someone. You know, you read something, you watch something, someone told you something. You learn from that. Uh, it's not like, oh my God, I got the idea how to fly, how, how to go to space by using water only. No, no. <laughs> you, you need to use uh, uh, other people's um, work in order to understand how things work. Simple like that. That is not in pure. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Alex, for your explanation. Okay, uh, the last two questions from sure. Satrina. Okay, um, my name is Sasrina, and before I ask, I want to say thank you for the presentation, Mr. Alexander. Talk thank about so creating a train, very interesting, and you give an example of anyone who is so incredibly capable of creating their own, own train. They start their career from the bottom, they stick to the color, their identity, their art, and what amazing people. As you mentioned before, many coffee shops have changed their interior design to make it more Instagrammable. So many people can take selfie and follow trends because they are driven by the feeling of FOMO or fear of missing out. I have to join this trend, then semacamnya. Which even though most of the coffee shops have almost the same thing, but they get profit from it. So speaking of creating FOMO in the community, what I want to ask if do you have any tips on how to make our products so important so that people feel the need or should to follow the trends that we create? Uh, okay, I, I will take the reference of the coffee, okay, the, the, the coffee thing. Uh, I will use this personal experience. Somebody invite me to drink this, uh, this coffee that is coming from the poo of an, of an animal. Uh, uh, it's very Indonesian, it's, it's amazing. Oh, and they say, okay, this, this coffee is so amazing, it's so expensive, blah, blah, blah. I drink it. Uh, okay, it tastes like coffee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it tastes like coffee. It's coffee, you know. You can give it this coffee, kapal, it's coffee, you know. I mean, I don't see the difference, okay. Uh, so when you have a coffee shop, for example, you are selling coffee. Is your coffee much better than the other coffee shop? You don't know, okay. Is, is your coffee better than a Starbucks? You don't know, it's cheaper, maybe. It has good quality, maybe. So the point is, uh, what can help to your brand, in this case, to the coffee shop, what can help to make it or boost up followers uh, based on the, on the product? And at the end, and I found this like quite uh, scary, but at the end it's lifestyle. And if your coffee doesn't show like identity, if it doesn't show me that thanks to your coffee, I get a nice style of living, something that the Starbucks is doing very well, which I hate, I don't like Starbucks. Either. So your brand will not be success. And I've seen many beautiful Instagram accounts that they post, today is a beautiful day, but without coffee will be horrible. And living without coffee is like living in a zombie war, you know, it's like they create this kind of need <laughs> that this need to have coffee in your life as something that like a, needs to be either your heart or your liver in order to live you know they are quite naive in that aspect you know like quite innocent believing that i will have five seconds of my life reading your your post but show me something different that your coffee can do with me you know like for example Again, I say, I don't like Starbucks coffee because they are just selling you um, being cool and it's expensive, you know, I don't see the point. I drink it, I never take a selfie with the coffee on it, I mean, with the blow on it, but my head, you know, I think I will better support uh, homemade brands, you know, brands that they are starting from scratch. If they sell me something that is more, uh, less industrial, more natural, you know, if the process of collecting, you know, the, the, the coffee until it arrives to your house is natural. If they support um, the nature, you know, if they take care of the nature, if they are not harmful with the nature, if they show me that going, going rustic means going elegant. So 
that is attacking my identity. You know, my identity, my identity feels that I am a person who likes, I prefer wood than metal. I prefer soil than water. You know, I prefer uh, earth colors than bright colors. So if myself, I don't I identify myself like that, I will look naturally for a brand that has that kind of characteristics. So technically, I will not buy in a Starbucks. I will buy that brand that sells this kind of living style that has an identity with my style. So at the end, your brand or the brand that you are working for needs to aim, needs to aim what market, you know, it needs, needs to spot what market is aiming. You know, that is the point, you know, okay, you are aiming at people between 20 to 20, 25 years old. You are aiming at uh, bikers. You are aiming at, you know, ladies only. You are aiming at, so you need to target that market first because to your coffee shop can go a person of 80 years old with a kid of 15 or 16 years old. Did they have something in common? You don't know. They went there for drinking your coffee? Maybe, but do they identify themselves with your brand? I don't think so. So you do the other way around. You look for the people that you feel that they can fit with your brand. So I think that is the, we like to see everything from left to right, but never from right to left, you know? And that's why there are many important brands right now doing this kind of job like, okay, by using my product, you get this kind of lifestyle, you know? And they say, yeah. I want it, you know, and I have some friends here, they have fancy cars, you know, um, it's Ferrari, Lamborghini, and I have an Akia. <laughs> Both of us, we have four wheels, four wheels, we have a, you know, a car, I will go to the same place with your Ferrari or with my Akia in the car, you know, it's, we go to the same place, but with a Lamborghini or the other cars, they are selling you lifestyle. Do you need a half million dollars car? No, 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 but do you identify yourself with this kind of lifestyle? Uh, lifestyle? Yeah, I want to look cool and awesome. So at the end, is everything attacking to your persona? That is actually the, the, the reason why many brands are looking always from left to right, but never from right to left. So you want to create something amazing, but you are not thinking that your target wants to look amazing too. How? Give them what they want. That is the point. Okay, actually, the coffee shop is just an example. So what I <laughs> well, what I can get from you is, so we have to offer something more natural or no, that no, is no, 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 no more natural. I'm saying that matches yeah. with my style. My with my oh. style, with my style, it matches to have something more natural, something more rustic, something more homemade. That is the way how I like things. What I'm saying is that you have to look for your target you know, is how, what kind of target you are aiming that product. If you want to sell coffee and coffee that shows that you are a, a person that has a nice life, a nice style, everything's healthy on you, you need to grab that market. Okay, how old are those people? Are they guys or girls? Are they together? Are they successful people in business? Are they people that they are into sports? Are they people, you know, into, I don't know, arts, you know? you need to set that market very clearly. Otherwise, they will not identify themselves with your brand. But if your brand sells, I mean, for example, I love leather bags, you know, the, the bags that they hang on the side for cameras and stuff like that. I just have one, very little. I wish you have a big one. But a leather bag identified very well with me. So I wish, you know, if I have $400 to buy that amazing bag from England, I don't have to find $400 but I already have the need. I want it. I need it. I want it. And it's like the Lamborghini case, you know? So your brand needs to give identity to your, uh, to your people. Uh, and the identity is based on what you are selling. Um, the example of the nature things, the, the, way how, the, the way how things like, you know, I like, for example, this kind of bracelets made of leather. I love it. It's my style. It's what I wear all the time, you know? But you will not see with me a fancy watch of made of gold. Uh, metal, gold, doesn't match with me. I'm more rustic, you know, more, I'm into skating. I feel more identified with that. So my clothes are going to identify myself. So I will not buy expensive clothes 
or brands that they look expensive, I will buy a brand that matches my style. And if you create a brand that matches the identity of another person, go. That is the goal. Okay, uh, Mr. Alex, sorry, uh, yeah. Sabrina, I think we have like around 10 minutes left, but we sure. still have one more uh, student waiting to ask Robbie, please uh, you can ask but please note we only have 10 minutes left thank you sure I will answer by the way yes Robbie 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 masih mau tanya atau tidak sorry Mr. masih masih di mute oh yeah silakan uh, Robbie okay thank you Ms. Octave hello sir good afternoon hey hello uh, so I make a lot of animation, illustration, and motion graphic and video editing, but I think it is all blunt. Uh, so I have an idea to make myself into a fiction character. Mm -hmm. I want to use uh, Mars, like Marshmallow, and well, I'm a, I'm I'm a pretty shy person, so mm -hmm. I will turn myself into a, something that is more attractive and it might be selling my uh, product uh, better than uh, mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the problem is, I think Indonesian, they didn't really care about creativity. Uh, most of the viral content in Indonesia is full of uh, stupid things or non creativity value or something like that. <clears throat> so is there a way to reach uh, to reach the majority of audience in Indonesia? Uh, quickly, okay. This is what I said before. There is on media. I'm not. I'm not talking Indonesia only. Worldwide, there is a lot of content that is garbage, you know. And there, uh, let's be honest. You know, I'm coming from a third world country, same as Indonesia, where we are more focusing on on the most important needs, which is to eat, where to live, and if we have money for the next day rather than focusing on arts and films and stuff like that. So there is a difference between uh, what you need and what you want. No different from Europe, perhaps, you know, in Europe, they have time for arts because they have money to enjoy it, you know? So they have a balance and equivalence. I'm not, um, again, I will not focus on Indonesia in, in general, in worldwide, there is a lot of garbage content online and people want to satisfy their needs quickly, you know, and something that you like, 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 that's it, you know, uh, next day you are waiting for the next content. But in your case, in your particular case, that you are into arts, uh, you cannot push people to love your art. I mean, uh, you cannot push me to like something that I'm not into it. So you cannot put everyone from the whole country like your art just because you think it's a good content no you have to look for the kind of people that they like that content i, I love uh, i love animation i love uh, drawing i'm not good at animation i'm not good at drawing but i love i like to follow these uh, uh artists especially these ones that work with pixels you know because it reminds me my, my era in the past when i was playing with video games and pixels <clears throat> so there is an indonesian artist a suraboya girl that is working with pixels right now i just follow her and i share her content with others that they like that content. So I cannot give you the, the solution to that to say, okay, how to make people like my art? What I can tell you is that you better focus on the people who like that art and create a market based on it. And again, you have to go outside of box. If you create a beautiful animations and you convert, you convert it as an FF, NFTs, you have to find out uh, there will be people that they will love your art. Like uh, Beeple Crap, you know, I, I'm not if I'm pronouncing well that name. Beeple, Beeple Crap, yeah, which is an artist that in less than one year, that guy uh, becomes so famous that he sold his arts online for more than 60 million of dollars by doing animations of less than 15 seconds, you know, because he was being eccentric with his animations. His animations were outside of the box, uh, giving a criticism to Donald Trump and you know all these problems that they were in the United States. And everybody, it, it's not that they love his art based on how artistic he was. It's they love his art based on the conjuncture in that time in the United States. So he, take, he took advantage of the situation and create an amazing art that is focusing on the conjuncture in that situation in that particular country. 
same like you. I'm not saying that you have to create <laughs> some common content with that kind of aspects, but based on your knowledge, what do you think can be the next step? You know, what can be outside of the box and say, I don't know, like a few days ago, I watched a nice short film called Irradiation. It's a Russian, Russian short film, animated Russian short film. And wow, the animation was amazing. You know, I followed the director and director of photography right away. So you have to go out of the box and create something amazing that can catch my attention rather than push people to like your art. It's like that, I guess. Okay, okay thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Alex. Um, okay, guys, I think we are running out of time. No, we're actually right on time. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alex. And to some, one thing uh, from uh, today's conversation, I think what I'm getting from Mr. Alex is that trending is actually helping us to, to learn about the rules that is happening in the society. But the most important thing is that we need to know ourselves first to I be able to come out with the authenticity that we have so we can bring up some originality. And I think it can be one of the follow-up issue, Mr. Alex, like how to bring up, you know, our own authenticity and, and, and you know, fulfilling our calling, like Mr. Alex here uh, being a filmmaker. I think that's like interesting subject to discuss um, sometime in the future. Okay. Um, so before we officially closing up um, our class today, let's take some photos. Everyone, please. Um, uh, is it okay that we take no, some no, 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 no. picture? We'll be really quick, just one capture and then it's done. Okay, everyone, um, how, how do we say smile in Spanish, uh, Mr. Alex? Uh, vamos, uh, let's go with the easy one, cheese. Cheese? Oh. <laughs> Okay, um, everyone, let's all say cheese. Okay, um, make it, you know, longer because I have 12 <laughs> screen, uh, but it's okay, okay. Okay, just, just, just hold, say cheese. I'm still <laughs> saying, you know, okay. Not yet, not yet. Um, okay, halfway to go. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait, um, it's a harder task than being a moderator to capture everyone's faces. Okay, one, one second. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, okay. One more. One more. Okay, we're done. All right. Thank you, uh, thank you everyone, for, uh, uh, for coming today. Thank you, Mr. Alex, for sharing your knowledge. And everyone, if you still have questions, please uh, feel free to pass it to your lecturer, mm -hmm. um, to, to Miss uh, Hannah. Mr. Latif, yeah, uh, to Miss Ade or Miss Heidi or to me, and and uh, we will make sure to pass it down to Mr. Alex if it's necessary uh, for us to ask him about your question. So um, I think we're all set. Uh, we can call it a day. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much. We hope you all have a nice weekend. Assalam wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Th